never gotten to that point. If not for these matches, China gave us as Intercontinental Champion and Women's Champion, and not to mention becoming one of the first women ever to compete, the only woman in history to have competed in the Royal Rumble match before Beth Phoenix uh, entered the Royal Rumble a few years after that. And it was a long time in between China's entry in the Royal Rumble and the entry of Beth Phoenix into the Royal Rumble match. So I think that, you know, wrestling has certainly come a long way. And it will be credited to people like China. Now, a lot of people will say, you know, China's best role was when she was the Mama Zita of Eddie Guerrero because of Eddie Guerrero's death and the circumstances of his death back in 2005, 2006, how he was found dead in his hotel room again, you know, because of some drug-related issue, heart failure, whatever the case may have been, the circumstances, his death and Chris Benoit's uh, death happening around the same time, a few months apart uh, from one another. I think it was less than one year we heard about the deaths of Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit. So a lot of people will say, you know, some of of China's best moments and matches, her best work came, you know, as the manager and the love of Eddie Guerrero's life as his mama Zita. But I don't think uh, the matches and the moments with Eddie Guerrero that were created with China uh, were some of her best. I think, you know, you have to go back through her time spent uh, working in the women's division and even as Intercontinental Champion, if you want to go back that far and even, you know, further back, you know, within the first probably six months of her career when she stood out. You know, when DX became as popular as what they did, she kind of just became someone who just kind of was overshadowed uh, by what people like Triple H and Sean Walton were doing. That was to be expected. But every time the WWE felt that she was being overshadowed by something, say, Sean Walton was doing in his programs with Kane or Triple H or the New Age Outlaws were doing, every time she would accompany them out of ringside because she became more than just the manager uh, of Triple H. She became the manager of Road Dog and Billy Gunn when they would have a certain match or the manager of Sean Waltman uh, when he would have a certain match. Then, of course, she turned on DX and went with the corporation. They did everything uh, they could to make China stand out. When they felt like she was being overshadowed, they put her in a championship match against a member of DX. And when they felt like she was being overshadowed and had been enough, they made her a member of the corporation low-blowing Triple H at the end of a championship match that he had, or a match he had that night, and revealed herself as the newest member of the corporation, and then she was known from then on out as Corporate China. And I think that WWE just knew uh, they had a lot of confidence in China. They knew China could get the job done and get somebody over she was working with, or she could get herself over or some issue that they were promoting. I mean, they could put her in a match with Stone Cold Steve Austin in a program with Austin, and she would make Austin stand out as much as what Austin would, and you wouldn't expect that to happen because you would think Austin would be being used to be being put over someone like China, but China was always someone who was able to work with no matter who uh, she was in the ring with, despite how people may or may not have felt about Joni Lauer and her approach in the wrestling business. I know there were a lot of people who thought China was a lesbian uh, back in 1998 when I profiled the movie uh, Beyond the Mat uh, because of her desire to want to lift weights. I know her mom uh, actually thought she was a lesbian because she wanted to lift weights more than she wanted to be into girly things like dolls and stuff, and there was a big concern about that in China's involvement in the wrestling industry. But, I mean, she made it work. Uh, China definitely did a lot of great things uh, for the wrestling business and affected a lot of lives. And without a doubt, it wouldn't surprise me none if China next year for WrestleMania 33, uh, the night before WrestleMania, is one of the top nine or ten inductions in this year's Hall of Fame because of how China, you know, redefined the wrestling business. If not next year, it'll be a few years after that. Uh, we're going to be seeing China within the next five years. We'll see China in the Hall of Fame. I mean, that's something with 100% confidence, I will say, uh, on my show, because you cannot go without putting China in the Hall of Fame for everything that she did, uh, the lives that she affected. Obviously, she's most known for her role as the manager and a member of Degeneration X. And every member of Degeneration X had something very nice to say about China. That's something that I really appreciate, because a lot of people may not have commented on China's death, but I think that everybody just went out of their way and just found the words uh, to express how they really felt about China, and that's something I can't give people enough profound credit uh, for having done, because people could have shied away uh, from commenting on China, the circumstances of her death. Of course, we know at 45 years old, it was because of a drug overdose, but I mean, how many drug overdoses have we heard about in the last four or five years? This is nothing different. It shouldn't come as a shock to anybody. Uh, it was because of a drug overdose. That was immediately what everybody thought it was, and that's usually what everybody thinks it is anyway, every time you hear of an arrestor's death. So it shouldn't come as a shock to everybody, even though how much they play out that it's a shock to this one or it's a shock to that one. Uh, they died. You know, we've heard about so many deaths, especially within the last half of a decade. That's the better part of the last five years. Uh, as I mentioned, Paul Bearer a couple of years before this death, uh, Dusty Rhodes, the Macho Man Randy Savage in 2011. Uh, we've heard about so many deaths, so it's something that's kind of become a tradition somewhat, a consistent habit, uh, if you would. There are a lot of things you could call this sort of stuff, uh, but it's something we've kind of gotten used to. 
uh, over the last number of years. So the deaths of people like uh, China, Miss Elizabeth, Macho Man Randy Savage, Paul Bearer, The Ultimate Warrior. Not so much a shock as probably what they would have been 10 years ago. If this were something that would have happened when China was an active member of the roster, say in 1998. If this were to have happened in 1998, I mean, there would have been a whole tribute show for China. There would have been a documentary probably released on China's life. And not to say there won't be. On WWE Network, there will probably be a special show on China's life uh, by the time all the footage is put together and more information becomes available about her death. Uh, but if this were to have happened in 1998, there would have been an entire week, if not an entire month, of China tributes, of China tribute shows. Uh, it would have been amazing uh, seeing it. You know, I remember Owen Hart's death and how much that was talked about. The night after Owen Hart's death, they had an entire Monday Night Raw episode uh, devoted to Owen Hart. It was a two-hour show of Owen Hart moments and matches and matches involving co-workers of Owen Hart that had their own little tributes uh, for Owen Hart that even included Stone Cold Steve Austin coming up and raising a beer out of respect to Owen Hart. I remember watching that with all the members of my family, people that I knew uh, throughout the most of my life, you know, talking about Owen Hart. You know, I spent the entire week... Uh, talking about Owen Hart, my grade 7 teacher at the time, you know, I had seen the pay-per-view Owen Hart had died at. I had worked with the Hart family members for a number of years. And my grade 7 teacher actually looked at me and said, you know, are you depressed over Owen Hart's death? I had no response at that point in time because I couldn't put into words how I felt about it. I felt he was being a bit ignorant about it. But the thing was, you know, so many people, you know, looked at wrestlers and their deaths. The first thing people will say to you is that it was a drug overdose it was because they went crazy at some point or another. Uh, it's not usually that, and I think one of the things that happens to you after being involved with the wrestling business for a number of years is the fact that you feel so close to these wrestlers, you can't help but feel a part of their life. And I've been involved with the wrestling business since at least 1999, the summer of that year I got involved with it, and I had no friends, I had no connections with anybody, uh, so I kind of had to make friends, and I had to make connections, and I eventually did that 10 years into my 18-year career. I've been doing this for nearly two decades. And it's still as hard for me, you know, making friends and making connections in the wrestling business as it was years ago for me. And hearing about a wrestler's death 10 years ago it was more of a shock uh, than what it is now. So I don't think in 2016 uh, we should be as shocked as what we probably would have been if this would have been, say, 1999, 2000, and this would have happened. At least it didn't happen when China was at the prime of her career winning championships and in these main events and creating all these moments for us. Without a doubt, China will never be forgotten. I think that China is definitely one of those consummate performers that can only be defined uh, for being consummate. She's one of those people that stood out for demonstrating great work ethic and dedication to her role uh, within the business, regardless if it was a manager, regardless if it was a fan favorite or a heel, regardless if it was a wrestler for the Intercontinental Title Division or the Women's Division. China did a great job, and without a doubt, she's a future Hall of Famer, in my opinion, and will be someone who will never be forgotten, either if you remember her as the Mamazita of Eddie Guerrero, uh, the desire of Mark Henry, the manager of Triple H, Sean Waltman, uh, Road Dog, and Billy Young, regardless of how you remember China and are choosing to remember China, as her death is still as much of a shock. Uh, uh, to us uh, days after it happens here. She died around the same time Prince died uh, after changing music in the 60s, 70s, and 80s as much as what he did. It seems like every couple of weeks, if not every few days, uh, we're hearing the same kind of thing. Uh, so again, you know, I say it shouldn't come as much of a shock uh, to people as probably what it would have, would have happened, say, a decade ago, what a difference a decade has made. Uh, for us, that really puts into perspective, or should at least put into perspective for you, what a difference 10 years has made on us when it comes to deaths of certain people, because this would have been blown out of proportion if this were 1997 through 2000 at the turn of the millennium. Uh, and what it does now, because we're just kind of looking at it as another death, another name on a huge list of people. Regardless of how you remember China as the manager of Triple H, the manager of all the members of DX, a wrestler, a consummate performer, uh, the one thing that will never be argued is that China will never, ever uh, be forgotten and forever be known as the one and only ninth wonder of the world of professional wrestling. If you have a thought on China, by all means, you can contribute to me in my comments on my video blog and my channel at Jonathan Clark 22 uh, Let me know what your favorite moments of China's career and life were. Uh, you can give that to me in the comments of my video blog on my YouTube channel. And by the way, guys, if you haven't subscribed, you can at youtube.com slash Jonathan Clark 22. You can follow me on Twitter at Jonathan Clark 1. And you can get in on my conversation on my Facebook page and Google Plus at HEW Entertainment. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what's on your mind. Uh, obviously, it's a concern to a lot of people, the death of China. It's very difficult for a lot of people to get over. 
Uh, but I think it's one of those things that I think I can get away with saying that we're kind of just used to because next year or the year after that, we're going to hear about two or three more deaths. I know before that was Dusty Rhodes, before that was Paul Bearer, before that was the Macho Man Randy Savage, the Ultimate Warrior. I mean, you can just go back through the last five years and just document so many deaths. And we've heard about, I think it was 40, 50 deaths uh, by 2000. We had heard about that many deaths by 2007, 2008. So I don't think this should be as much of a shock to a lot of people as probably what a lot of people think it should be. Uh, but, you know, it's not 1997 through 2000 anymore. At least it didn't happen when China was at the prime of her career. But like I said, you know, China's death will never, ever be forgotten, as China will never, ever be forgotten, as one of those greatest performers of all time. And I would like to believe that I can get away with saying that a future Hall of Famer for China, if not next year, the year after that, or the next few years, will see China in the Hall of Fame. And I think I can get away with saying what I said, because it's justifiable. China definitely is one of the greatest of all time. I'm your host, Jonathan Clark, and I will talk to you again next week. Thank you so much for listening. Like what you hear? Tell us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Tell us what to do. Yeah. You think you can tell us what to wear? <laughs> you think you better? Yeah. Well, you better get ready to bow to the master. So, you know what you used to do, then, fool? I just got tired of doing what you told me to do. But that's a break, boy. Yeah. That's a break, little man. You tell him. Xbox, put it for a to a stop. Speak my mind. I keep it rocking that bottom line. Suck it. Two tears in the bucket. I'm not the one to try your luck with Hit hard like brass knuckles See your face through the turnbuckle, dude I got no love for you Generation X Who's gonna kick your ass? Generation X Who's gonna kick your ass? Generation X Who's gonna kick your ass? Generation X I tell you Build and destroy you and your boys Mother, mother, make some noise That's even if you're paranoid Black sales, that's black Get you right in the room and that's how I feel And let you know the deal one of the elements that never have stuff I demolish all components to knock out the rest I'm gonna kick your ass